These are my seven top tips for mastering low code automation. Whether you're using Zapier, Make, or really any other low code tool to automate your processes, these seven tips are going to be the mark of a master, or at least they are for me. So yeah, we're gonna take a look at these tips through the lens of a real project. The first three are kind of practical, the last four are a little bit philosophical, but I think the last four hurt the most when you don't do them. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get stuck in. Oh yes, and if you're new here, hi, my name is Alex, and on this channel, we talk about anything and everything, low code, automation, AI, databases, front ends, tips, tricks, you freaking name it, we do it. So yeah, let's get stuck in. Now, like I said in the intro, all of today's tips are going to be based on like a practical approach. We're gonna look at all of them through the lens of a real project. And that project is to connect Airtable to Google Calendar. And more specifically, to be able to create a Google Calendar event as soon as I so wish to from Airtable. Very typical request actually for a lot of our clients. Now, when we get that request typically from a client, they might just say that they want events from Airtable to sync to Google Calendar, but there's so much more to that. And tip number one deals with getting to the point very quickly. And the point is to create an event. So let's get started. Essentially, here I have a very simple make scenario that just contains the trigger, we're getting the record, and we're just creating an event. The way that things work are super similar to how we do them usually on the channel. If you're familiar, we typically use an automation, which is typically also based on a checkbox, but this time I'm using the when a record is updated trigger instead of when a record matches conditions. And there is a reason for that and we'll get to that reason shortly, but the rest of the setup is basically the same. You have a trigger, we run a script, the script just basically sends the Airtable record ID to make via a webhook. Just replace this webhook with your own, that make is generated for you record ID just like I've written it here and uh, just map the Airtable record ID in this value field, press finish, turn it on, don't forget to turn it on, and that's it. You're basically set up with your triggers. Now let's go ahead and test this. So the way that I've set this up is quite simple. We have a webhook, we are just getting that record from our events base, and then we're just basically creating an event, right? We use the create an event module and I've just mapped things a little bit arbitrarily here. The most interesting thing about this is that I've probably just added 30 minutes to the end time. So when we see this event created in our calendar, you'll see that it's a little, uh, that it takes space in your calendar. Of course, this can be dynamic, but for the moment, there's really nothing much else to this. Let's go ahead and see if it runs, run once, wait for new data let's go ahead and create event hopefully within a few seconds it should then appear on our calendar there it is excellent so that's it tip number one make sure that you get to the point very quickly you achieve the basic mission without much thought just go for it get from a to b and we're gonna build on that later Okay, so it's time for tip number two, and that is to always think in CRUD, C-R-U-D, create, read, update, delete. We have basically taken care of create in the beginning, but now you also have to start thinking about what happens if I want to update the time of the event from Airtable or I want to update the time from the calendar, or I want to delete the event itself. How do I take care of these things? And it's not so much how, it's about taking that all into consideration. So let me go ahead and show you how to basically, on a very simple level, do this automation and kind of like map this out and make. So from a practical standpoint, in order to facilitate 
crud or at least a crud enabled approach in your automations you need to kind of like create a tie between the systems and usually that tie gets created upon creation what do i mean i mean that first and foremost what i need to do is i need to print my calendar event id inside of Airtable, so that if i then decide to let's say delete that event from google calendar by creating a separate action for that delete function i am already sending that google calendar event id in my payload in my trigger back into make so that then the system knows which event to delete so let's go ahead and set all of this up i'm going to first and foremost create a little update node that updates that record cool and select my table, fetch my record, map that in, and then gcal event ID, event ID. Perfect. The next thing that we need to do is just run this one more time, wait for new data. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that event that we created previously. That's gonna trigger it, but ultimately I just wanna trigger the record so that we print it back into our database. Excellent. Fantastic. Now, let's talk about delete. Very simple, straightforward action that we can implement fairly quickly. So delete event. Let's also color it like red and press save. Okay. So now what I need to do is create some filtration. So here at this point between taking action and triggering the record, I need to create a router. That router is going to act on that action field text operator equals to create how did i name it the create events and the other one is obviously going to be delete event and we just need to find that excellent and then just add the action again and that's going to be equal to just going to copy paste it delete event and it will here then ask you about which event do you want to delete so here we need to add our calendar excellent and the event id all we have to do is just map it from Airtable, and that's basically it let's run once wait for new data and my action is going to be delete event and now you'll see how the system will go down this bottom path deleting that event and hopefully we should see it there you go and it just disappeared right in front of our eyes time for tip number three and that is no matter how advanced you are in your automation skills don't underestimate the power of ai let's take a practical example for instance let's say we just got a change of scope and the client now not only just wants us to create an event, but also wants to make it as easy as possible for us to create recurring events. So if you jump into the module that creates the event, down at the very bottom, you get this recurrence setting. And typically it's like this, but if you go on and want to add an item, you technically are required to create like a RFC 5545 rule. Now, I'm not super familiar with that. And if I open this up, there is like a link to this, you know, very official document. And yeah, you can see where I'm going with this. Ain't nobody got time for that. So what do I do? I open up ChatGPT and I ask it a very quick question. Hey, ChatGPT, are you familiar with creating RFC 5545 compliant expressions for the frequency of an event? I'm trying to use Google Calendar's API to create a recurring event and it's asking me for this. So technically, AI is there for experts to make their life easier. For beginners, it's there to kind of be their coach if you're willing to let it be that. This is what I do as well. And I've been doing automation for almost 10 years. If I forget, if something is not a very frequent requirement, I will use AI to help me out very quickly. And as you can see, immediately, I've got some answers here that will help me do my job. Let's just wait for it to finish. And you see where I'm going with this. 
ChatGPT is now going to give me ideas on how to create that piece of string, essentially, that we need to dynamically create within Airtable so that we can pass it into our automation in Make. And now here's an example of how this formula basically works. I just behind the scenes set it up and this is what it is. We have a simple if statement that basically says, if this is a recurring event, which is just a little check mark here, then we have this nice little concatenate formula that essentially takes a switch at the recurrence frequency. So if it's weekly, it prints weekly, but in all caps. If it's bi-weekly, we get weekly interval two. If it's monthly, then monthly, then we take count, then we have basically like a little semicolon count equals, and then the value from the recurve four. Essentially, it's just a fancy string. Here's how it works. If I say that this is a recurring event, I then need to say how many times is this recurring? And what's the frequency? Right after that, we should get our recurrence formula printed in here. Airtable, hello? There we go. So yeah, that's basically it. Now let's see how it works. I'm just gonna unchange. I'm gonna change this action and I'm gonna run it again. There we go, create, and let's take a look. Oh, I actually already have that event over here. And there you go, it just created two. Now let's uh, delete both and I'm going to set this up to run on a bi-weekly frequency. There we go. So bi-weekly, uncheck, recheck. And now we should see it come up on the 15th and on the 29th. So there's like a gap, basically. There we go. Immediately. It's there. Time for tip number four. And that is that you cannot possibly test things enough. No matter how experienced you are, things will break. And it's really important that you let your teammates know, that you let your clients know, things break. Just because it's low code doesn't mean that it's low responsibility. You still have to test literally every step as you go, no matter what it is that you're building, test, 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 and test some more. Especially if you're just about to introduce other people to see what you've built, that is the time to be even more vigilant. Because right up till this point, you've been on your own, you've been working on this, you've been babying this process to work. But at this point, there's other people staring at this. And this is when you really need to make sure that you're available for fixes and even more testing and more fixes. Tip number five. And that is, if you're uncomfortable, great. You're on the right path. What do I mean by that? I mean that especially if you're at an intermediate level of automation mastery and you feel like you can do pretty much everything, at that point, I would suggest don't let yourself rest on your laurels. In other words, when you have built something like this, which is a very, very simple process, of course, we've built crazier monsters on this channel, but generally speaking, don't just copy paste modules around from one project to another. Try to force yourself to go through the same motions again. Even if you don't remember absolutely everything, try to feel uncomfortable because that feeling of being uncomfortable with your memory, with the logic of certain paths, like looking at the CRUD operations of a particular animation, or a particular workflow, rather. That feeling of being uncomfortable, that is what is going to make you master. Copy-pasting modules around and just testing them is not going to make you master. You have to be able to get it really under your skin. And the only way to do that is through pain, through feeling, through challenging yourself every single time, especially if you're in an, on an intermediate level. If you're an expert, well, even then, it's good to feel uncomfortable and trying to put yourself in uncomfortable situations by building out scenarios by the book, step by step, testing everything to the nth degree and so forth. 
All right, so my final two tips are kind of geared towards advanced automators. And tip number six has to do with mastering error handling. In other words, once you've gone through the whole process of setting things up, going through CRUD, testing, involving other people, and fixing things after they've tried to break your system and everything seems to be running a okay and you're kind of ready to go live now you have to make sure that your system doesn't break even if some kind of api service just decides not to work one day and in make it's actually quite easy to do all you have to do is really two things number one every single module needs an error handler what i do i usually set it to break and just press OK and add this break to every single module that you have. The final thing is to actually make sure that you allow storing of incomplete executions and set that to yes, press OK, and then the red little warning sign just disappears. So that takes care of your scenarios not breaking. Doesn't mean that they won't have errors they will usually it's things out of your control because like i said you've probably done your homework by this point but thinking about error handling thinking about maybe even api limits that's one thing that really sets apart advanced automation experts from the rest of the world all right final tip and that is Overcoming laziness, and especially laziness at the end of the project. When I say that, I mean making sure that at the end of the day, you have documented absolutely everything for your own sake. Now, here's what I mean. Usually what I do, I use Loom, loom.com. You probably have heard of this. And it's just a piece of software just that records your screen and you can just basically record your screen, explain what you've done with a certain automation and then just store it where the project details are stored. You could just make a quick little note. For instance, here on the first module of the scenario, you can just add a note and copy paste that little loom explainer. Now, after somebody has gone through all the trouble of setting up an automation in the ways that I've just described, using CRUD, testing, fixing bugs, involving others, trying to break it, fixing it. At this point, you probably just want to get rid of this damn thing and never see this automation again. But you have to resist that temptation and you have to spend two minutes. Just two minutes is enough for a quick little loom that is going to save you in six months time trying to revisit this automation because maybe the client wants to do something else with it and maybe wants to expand it. These, that two minute clip is going to save your ass like you wouldn't believe. In fact, it's just a nice thing to do. It's just good karma to have documentation on the things that you build. And the best, easiest, quickest way, in my opinion, is just a quick little screen share of what you've done. And yeah, just share the link. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this little list of tips helpful. And if you are on your way to becoming an automation expert, good on you. It's a fantastic little world to be in. You'll get crazy. You will uh, hate yourself for it. But at the end of the day, it's super rewarding to build systems for people who will use them every day. And I see no greater joy than that. Basically, if you agree with some of the things that I've said, leave me a comment down below. I try to answer absolutely every single one of them. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks.